let's learn about the commonly asked questions in spotters on mandible mandible has a body and a ramus these are the two major parts of mandible the body further has an external surface then an internal surface it has an upper border and it has a lower border also referred to as base of the mandible whereas the ramus has an external surface then it has an internal surface it has an anterior border a superior border a posterior border and then a lower border the region where the posterior border of the ramus meets the inferior border of the ramus this is referred to as the angle of mandible now one of the commonly asked question in spotter of mandible is the pterygoid fovea this is the pterygoid fovea and usually during spotters the attachments to the pterygoid fovea are asked pterygoid fovea gives attachment to the tendon of lateral pterygoid and articular disc of temporomandibular joint then the second or the other commonly asked spotter uh, questions are mesotric notch this is the mesotric notch the question asked during spotters is what are the structures related to the mesotric notch the mesotric notch is related to mesotric vessels and mesotric nerves the next commonly asked question in uh, mandible is the coronoid process you will be asked to identify the coronoid process and the structure attached to it the fibers of temporalis gets inserted to the coronoid process then the next commonly asked spotter is the mental foramen the structures passing through the mental foramen are mental nerves and mental vessels apart from identifying the mental foramen one thing that is usually asked is the structures passing through it mental vessels and nerves will pass through this foramen then when we look at the internal surface of the mandible this is referred to as the mylohyoid line the mylohyoid line or mylohyoid ridge gives attachment to the mylohyoid muscle this mylohyoid ridge will divide the entire internal surface of the body of the mandible into an upper sublingual fossa related to the sublingual gland and lower submandibular fossa related to the submandibular salivary gland the next commonly asked spotter is the mandibular foramen the mandibular foramen allows for the passage of inferior alveolar vessels and nerves just behind the mandibular foramen we have the mylohyoid groove the structures passing through this groove are mylohyoid nerve and mylohyoid vessels if we carefully observe the mandibular foramen is guarded by a tongue like projection and this tongue like projection is referred to as lingula the lingula gives attachment to spino mandibular ligament the spino mandibular ligament as we know is a remnant of the perichondrium of the meckel's cartilage or first arch cartilage then the internal surface of the body shows two pairs of tubercles superior and inferior these respectively give attachment to genioglossus and geniohyoid uh, the attachments to superior and inferior genial tubercles can be remembered by remembering the alphabetical order g for genioglossus is attached to the superior genial tubercle and h geniohyoid will be attached to inferior genial tubercles apart from this uh, the other spotter question which can be asked in uh, mandible is the angle of the mandible angle of the mandible gives attachment to stylo mandibular ligament stylo mandibular ligament is a modification of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia to summarize the commonly asked question during a uh, spotter examination with respect to mandible are the pterygoid fovea the mesotric notch coronoid process the mandibular foramen mylohyoid groove lingula the mylohyoid line